Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today I am super excited because we are going to be talking about one of my all time favorite topics. But I have to say this topic is a little bit controversial. Sometimes this is not everybody's favorite topic to discuss. Today we are talking about animal poop and its importance in the environment and for the planet as a whole. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about animal poop. Before we talk about why poop is such an important part of having a balanced ecosystem, we should probably figure out why animals are pooping to begin with. Well, it doesn't matter if you're a carnivore or an herbivore or an omnivore, animals are eating for two very important things, for energy and for nutrients. We need both of those things to grow big and strong and stay happy and healthy. After we eat, that food waste has to come out the other end. And like I said before, it's a good thing it does because it's very, very important. Don't worry, we are mostly going to be talking about non-human animals today. So let's get started talking about the first reason animal poop is critically important and it has to do with nutrients. I just said that animals get the nutrients that they need from their food. Nutrients are the things that help us grow big and strong. Since plants typically aren't eating things, they get the nutrients they need from the soil. But how does the nutrients get there? Well, it's partly from poop. There are very important animals called decomposers. These are animals like millipedes or earthworms. These animals eat dead plant matter that's in the environment, leaves that have fallen off of trees, fruit that has ended up on the forest floor. Decomposers eat all of that stuff and then when they crawl around in the soil and they poop, they add all of that nutrients back into the soil that plants can use to grow. So poop adds nutrients to the soil. Animals and their poop are also responsible for spreading that nutrients around an environment. Let's think about an African elephant for a moment. African elephants don't digest their food all of the way. It's kind of half digested grasses and leaves. As they walk miles and miles and miles around the environment, pooping along the way, they're depositing nutrients in different parts of the environment where there may not have been nutrients before. Where an elephant poops, decomposers can get to work, breaking all of that half digested food down and adding those nutrients back to the soil. Nutrients are just as important in water as they are on land, and they are added to water by animal poop as well. If we think about the ocean and some of our really big animals that live there, like whales, whales can poop gallons and gallons and gallons at a time, all of this adding nutrients to the water. Tiny little algaes need these nutrients to grow and then little animals eat the algae, then bigger animals eat those animals and then bigger animals and so on and so on and so on. Without whale poop, the ocean food web would collapse. While most plants get the nutrients they need from the soil or from it floating around them in the ocean, some plants get the nutrients they need in a little bit more of a direct way. Some plants are carnivores, like a pitcher plant, who we usually picture feeding on small bugs that fall into their pitchers, but occasionally they feed on poop as well. Sometimes little tree shrews will come over to drink nectar and they'll leave poop behind. Sometimes bats will come and roost in the pitcher plant for the day, and while they're in there, they'll poop. And then the pitcher plant breaks that poop down and turns it into nutrients that the pitcher plant can use to grow big and strong. Now animals spread something more than just nutrients in their poop. Some animals spread seeds in their poop and we call these animals seed dispersers. Now this is really important because plants want their seeds spread all around the environment to reduce competition. If their seeds started growing right next to them, they would steal all their water and nutrients. So it's important that we have animals that take these seeds all around the environment. 
Lemurs are a great example of seed dispersers. We actually sometimes call lemurs creators of the forest over on the island of Madagascar where they live because they eat so many fruits and so many seeds and then they swing or hop around the forest and they go to the bathroom and they spread seeds everywhere allowing the forest to grow and be healthy. There are even some aquatic animals who are seed dispersers. There is a fish called the Paku, who's actually kind of like a cousin to the piranha. They live in the Amazon River, but instead of eating meat like a piranha, they like to eat nuts and seeds. So they swim around in the river, they eat the nuts and seeds, they poop while they're swimming, and then those seeds can wash up on the riverbanks and grow new plants right along the river. Now, there's something to be said about an animal in water spreading seeds, how helpful that could be. How about an animal that flies? There are lots of birds that spread seeds around, but I'm thinking actually of a mammal, a bat, a very special type of bat called a flying fox. Flying foxes live in tropical parts of the world where there's all these little islands and because they can fly from island to island to island, they can actually move seeds around between islands that otherwise wouldn't be able to get to these new places. Let's stay on these tropical islands for a moment because believe it or not, they also have something to do with poop. In fact, they were kind of created by poop. There is a very cool fish called the humphead parrotfish, and this species of fish eats algae, but this algae is usually growing on rocks or hard coral that the parrotfish also consumes when trying to eat the algae. All this rock and hard coral passes through the fish and comes out the other end as a fine white sand, and just one fish can make hundreds of pounds of sand in a single year. So eventually that sand builds up and creates these small islands. And then animals come, visit the island, they poop, which drops nutrients. Other animals come and they poop, which maybe drops seeds. And eventually the nutrients and the seeds and the sand, which are all there because of poop, allow these beautiful new islands to grow and flourish and become brand new habitats. Who knew that the tropical islands we would all love to visit were actually built by animal poop? And now we know animal poop has a ton of different jobs, right? It adds nutrients both to soil and the ocean, it drops seeds, and it can even create new habitats. If you didn't like to talk about poop before, I hope you do now, but of course, only in a scientific way. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining me for our animal poop lesson today. If you would like to test your poop knowledge, please feel free to visit our Educating Adventures website for quizzes, activities, projects, and more. I hope we see you guys next time at our next Educating Adventures. Thank you so much.